So let's start now. So earlier we have discussed about BYOB. So now, how can we secure our local network? So we have uh, this router switch and access point that we have configured earlier. So uh, let me just show you how can we uh, secure our uh, local network using our RJ Cloud and also RJ Cloud app. Okay. So what are those uh, security that we have? Some sample security like uh, access control list, anti arp spoofing, loop prevention, BHCP snooping, and uh, securing, lastly, securing the intranet access. Because later on, I will show you, uh, we have this function called intranet access, okay? So we go on, on the first one, the access control list. So what is this access control list that we have? So it's a list of rules that specifies which users or systems are granted or denied access to a particular object or system resource. For example, earlier, uh, Kelvin showed you that uh, the guests cannot access the internal resources, uh, but uh, can access the internet. Okay, so that is what we want on our uh, on our network. So the guests must have no access to the internal resources. So we can do that actually using the access control list. Okay, in the traditional way that we have uh, in our network, uh, using the EEG, for example. So step one, we need to access, of course, the EG, and then go to gateway behavior access control, and then add the access control into the following, okay? So based on IP, source network, uh, destination network, protocols, uh, control type, for example, block, and effective time, and also the interface. And then uh, sometimes you need to make another access control list for the reverse traffic. So all of that uh, steps, actually four steps for the traditional way using our uh, eWeb. But you can do that, of course, on our cloud uh, using uh, on new cloud feature. Uh, we have two steps actually on the Rigid Cloud browser. You can configure if you on the configuration tab, ACL, configure, and then step two, just drag the networks that you want to isolate. For example, here, uh, we have this uh, cloud on our browser, okay? Configuration, ACL, and then click to configure. Okay. So here we have, we have the VLANs that we have created earlier on the VIO, the staff LAN, staff Wi-Fi, CCTV and also the guest Wi-Fi. So for example, you have forgot to isolate the guest Wi-Fi, for example. So you can you can isolate here on this page, just drag and drop uh, this guest Wi-Fi VLAN over the isolated zone. Okay, so when you do that, the access list will automatically sync on the EG or on the router. Okay, so like this. On the gateway behavior access control, you will see that the rules are automatically synced on our router or EG gateway. On traditionally, you need to click add to add access control list, uh, enter the source and destination IP. So it's very tedious. Unlike this one, uh, it's very easy to uh, configure. So now let me show you the live demo of it. I'll just show my web browser here. So this is our cloud. If you will access cloud-as, plus Asia, networks.com and then just input your credentials. Yeah. So uh, on the configuration tab, click ACL. Of course, you need to click your uh, project. For example, we need to click to configure. So we have VLANs here. Just drag and drop the VLANs on the isolated zone and then uh, click save. 
So, so that's how easy it is. So for verification, I will access the, the gateway. Yeah. And the gateway tab, behavior, neighbor, access control. So here, see, it's, it automatically populate the access control that we need. For example, guest Wi-Fi is unable to access VLAN 1, staff LAN, staff Wi-Fi, and also the CCTV. It can only, they can only access the, the internet. Okay. So for example, I don't want to isolate this, just drag to the other side and we'll save. And then if you uh, refresh this one, we'll see that the access list now is gone because uh, you uh, transferred it to the internet working zone, okay? And also you can do this uh, PCL on the uh, RJ Cloud app as well. So let me show you. I'll just share my device. So it's basically the same uh, concept or principle. Let me just get a read of this page. Just a moment. Just wait for it to move. Okay. So you can see my uh, RJ Cloud up here. And then click on the project. So if you want to see the ACL or the access control list, just hover on this or scroll up the toolkit. Scroll up the toolkit. And then you will find the access control at the corner, uh, bottom right. Okay. Access control. And it is it has the same function as on the cloud browser. You just click start config. And then uh, you will see here the isolation zone and internet working zone. Just drag and drop, of course, uh, what we want to secure. For example, guest Wi Fi. Just like what we did on the cloud browser, just click OK and then success. Okay. So that's it. So it's the same with the uh, rigid uh, cloud browser. Let me show you again. Yeah. Once it uh, finished on the cloud app, you will see the access control list over the uh, router, EG, in this case, eg 310 v okay. okay, so that's basically it for the uh, ACL. So our next one is a ARP spoofing. So what is this uh, ARP spoofing? So it's a type of attack actually, uh, which malicious actor sends a falsified uh, ARP uh, address the solution protocol messages over a local network. So what it does is there is a um, man in the middle attack. For example, this is the normal operation. User, there's a switch, there's a router, and then the user is going to the internet. So there, if there is a man in the middle attacker, he can disguise himself as a gateway for the victim. 
So the, the victim will, will think that this is the gateway or the router. And then the router will also think that this is the user. Okay. So the, uh, the traffic will go to the, the attacker and then go out the internet. So all of your data will be uh, get by the attacker. So to uh, to address that uh, security issue, we have this anti arp spoofing on our uh, DJ Cloud app also and the uh, DJ uh, Cloud browser. Okay? So we have this ARP guard. So traditionally, of course, we have also the traditional way which is you configure it on every switches. For example, access the RJ and ray switch, go to security, anti app spoofing, okay? and then you need to input the gateway IP and select the ports that you want to protect. So basically all of the ports, you want to protect it. And then you need to repeat for all other switches. So that's the traditional way. So our, on the new cloud feature, uh, we just need to go to configuration, uh, ARP spoofing, and then enable it. And then we can choose the network to enable the ARP spoofing and then deliver the config to all of the switches. Okay, so here it is. Configuration, ARP spoofing, and then there's an ARP guard. So you just need to enable this one and then select, for example, we have this VLANs. Uh, we configure the staff LAN, the CCTV, the guest LAN, the, uh, guest Wi-Fi, sorry. And then click recommended if you want to uh, automatically enable for all the access switches. For custom, well, you can choose well, which switch you can deliver the config. We we'll just deliver config and then uh, on the switch side. So I'm using, actually, I'm using an old model S2910 series. So on security, gateway, anti app spoofing. So it will populate on the uh, filtering port. So all of the port will have uh, this IP, uh, the gateway IP. Okay. So it's automatically. So traditionally, you will go through each each switch and go to security, anti app spoofing, and then configure all the ports. So in our cloud, so we just need to select the switch or select all switches uh, for it. Okay. So to show you again, we have here the cloud. Take a moment. Here on the cloud. So we have on the cloud browser and uh, configuration, ARP spoofing, and then you will see the ARP guard. Okay, you just need to enable this one and then click all your gateways or your uh, default gateways that you have for each VLAN, and then you will see recommended or custom. So for custom, you need to choose, for example, this switch only, or it depends on you. But uh, we, we, we would like to use this recommended, so it will auto-identify access switches. Okay, so if you have many switches, you just click every switches for it to be uh, secured. You just deliver the config. So you, you will see here, uh, all of your VLANs are, are protected in this switch. So it has an ARP guard. So for us to view that, I need to access the switch uh, remotely. Just go and do that. So we are using this cloud, you can access your uh, devices as long as you have uh, a device that can tunnel, for example, this uh, gateway. You can tunnel through the switch so I can access the switch anywhere. Okay. Let's just wait for it to load. So here I am on the switch right here. 
uh, security, we have anti-arch spoofing, then you will see here, it is enabled on all of our ports. So instead of adding it manually, uh, choosing the ports, what is the gateway IP, our cloud will do it for you. Just click the gateway and then it will automatically uh, send the configuration to the switches. So we will have these ARP entries to record the ARP, ent ARP entries for your subnets or for your VLANs, uh, ensuring the security of this uh, ARP guard to the switch. Okay. So what we have next is this loop uh, prevention. So what is a loop? So basically, a loop is a network loop, of course, when a network has more than one active path carrying information from the same source to the same destination. For example, like this one, we have two paths going to the other. Okay. So what we do in loop prevention, so we have this uh, PJ link detection protocol, so RLDP, so it can detect there is a loop. So once it detects there's a loop, it will automatically shut down the port. So like STP, it works uh, the same, but in STP, they cannot. Uh, for example, you have here, you have here a hub, for example, connected to the switch, and the hub has a loop in it, so there's a hub. Basically, STP cannot uh, cannot know that there's a loop in here because this is a hub, and STP doesn't have uh, a hub doesn't have STP. So in STP, there will be a loop on the network. So using our loop prevention, it will uh, shut down this port automatically okay, to prevent uh, loops in our network. Okay. So loop is bad because our network can go down if there's a loop in our network. Okay. Also, traditional way, you need to enable it and then repeat for all the switches. You need to configure for each switch loop prevention, or you can do on our cloud using the configuration, loop prevention, optimize, and then deliver the config to all the switches. For example, here we have loop prevention, you just need to optimize. And then uh, like uh, ARP spoofing, like ARP spoofing, there's a recommendation here and custom. For recommendation, it will uh, enable for all our, our switches. For the custom, you can select the access, access switches, okay? And then you will see on the uh, switch that it has enabled it on the network STP RLDP settings. So you will see the RLDP is on, there's a detection turbo, okay? And then for all the ports, it is enabled, for example, 27. All the 27 ports, it has a loop detection. So what will it do? If it detects a loop, it will shut down the port, okay? That is the policy for this. Okay, to show you again, let me just take the duration. Here, configuration with prevention. So you can enable it here. Just click on optimize and then uh, click on the switch or custom to click on the switch. Uh, recommendation to apply to all your switches. Just click deliver config. Okay, so that's the loop prevention, and you will see it on the switch network STP or all the settings. And you will see all of the ports have a loop detection. Okay. So you can also do that on our uh, 
close up. For example, I have a demo project. Example. So uh, everyone can have this demo project. Just create the project if you want to try. Of course, the BYOD OB earlier and also these functions. So you can try it. Just click on demo project and then click yes if you want to try the song or no if you don't want. Okay. So I already have here a demo project. And then on the toolkit, of course, we will see here the loop prevention. We will see, and also the uh, yeah, the loop prevention is here. You just click it and then enable it. So once you enable loop prevention, you'll see it will be enabled on all the switches that we have. For example, on the demo, we have the NBS 32, 31, and ES. 218GC-P, so it will enable to every switch that you have, just like here on the uh, VJ Cloud uh, browser. Yeah, it will be enabled on all of your switches. So that's how you secure it basically for to prevent uh, any loops on your network. So if you will see the switch, click the switch. You will see here at the next week. Sorry. Let me do it again and save it. And here, so it's enabled. I need prevention. So let's see for the other switches. It's just not loading. And the loop prevention is enabled. So that's on the uh, VDA Cloud app that we have. And for the next one, we have this DHCP snooping. So what is this uh, DHCP snooping that we have on our switches, uh, VG and V switches? What is this uh, DHCP snooping? So it's a security feature that acts like a firewall between untrusted hosts and trusted DHCP servers. So basically, if you have this, you have a client connecting and then getting IP to this DHCP server. But if there is another DHCP server in the network, it can ruin your network because your client can get IP from this one. Okay? Using the HCP server, uh, DHCP snooping rather, this DHCP snooping on the switch, you can trust a port on where the legit DHCP server is. For example, on this topology, it's on this port or on this uplink port. So these two ports are not uh, trusted, so uh, the switch will not give DHCP on that port. So the client, if it requests DHCP, from the server, so the server can provide an IP to this DHCP client. Only this server, because only this port is the trusted port, not on this port. So this is an untrusted port. Okay, so that is basically DHCP snooping. So how will you configure it? Traditionally, of course, we have to access the switch, the VG Ray switch, so you go to security and DHCP snooping, and then you can turn on DHCP snooping there and then 
you can select the trusted ports. Okay? And of course, you need to repeat for all other switches if you have many switches in the network. Okay. Or we have this uh, for, this, for this one, I think the resolution is not correct. But on the new cloud feature, we have only two steps also. Just go to the configuration DHCP and optimize now. And then just deliver the config to all the switches and let us see how will we uh, how will the cloud configure it on our switches. Okay. So on the configuration, we have DHCPs to clean. Try to optimize now. Okay. And then there is recommended, of course, and custom. For the custom, you can click only the one that you want to configure. Recommended is for all the switches, of course. So once you configure this, it will be synced to the switches. And then you will see on the switch, there's a security tab, the HCP snooping. The HCP snooping is on. And of course, you will see here, it automatically trusts the uplink uh, port. Because on this topology, I have, I have a router and then connected to this switch, for example, here on port 23. And this is my uh, DHCP server. Okay, so this is my DHCP server connected to the port 23 and the cloud automatically trusts this port, okay? So to show you, that's for, So here it is, the configuration, the HCP snooping, and then just click optimize now. So you will see it will detect your switch. And this uh, GI023 is the uplink port to the router. So this is the DHCP server, and this is the, up, uh, the trusted port. So if you will connect another DHCP server in either of uh, uh, any other port uh, other than this one, it will not be trusted. Okay, so just deliver the config. So you will see it's enabled on that switch. And then if you go to the security, we see this thing. There it is. So it's on. Currently on, and then it choose the uplink by default uh, for the trusted port. So all of the other ports are not trusted, okay? so it will be secured. So that's how easy it is. And also, you can, uh, of course, you can configure that on our VG uh, Cloud app. Just clean this. Also on the toolkit, then you will see here the DHCP snooping. You can enable it here. And as you can see uh, on the demo, on the demo project, you can see all of the switches that has been enabled. So by default, all of our switches that is capable of HCP snooping will be enabled. And then the uplink will be the trusted port. For example, this NBS 3200, the trusted port is two because uh, one and two is aggregated. So the aggregate port is trusted. And this one is 24, 24, and one. You can see on the uh, default. In the topology, yeah. okay. this one is actually an aggregate port. 
it was trusted. And also this one for 24, for 24, 24, and then fourth one for the yes. So it automatically activates the DHCP snooping on the uplink by default. Okay. And lastly, I want to show you is the internet access function. Uh, what is it? What does what it does and how can you use it in your uh, network? I'll just uh, switch my table here. Okay. So basically, uh, internet access is a service that enables users to access the internal services devices over the internet. So for example, I have here server server inside my network and also NVR so connected to a switch, PG switch, and then we have an EG router that goes through the internet. So a user outside your network like this, there's a user, uh, computer laptops or even mobile phones, they can access your NVR or your server through this uh, EG. So our EG gateway or router will form a tunnel for you. Will form a tunnel for you to access the said devices. For example, an NVR. NVR you can access using our cloud with this uh, Ray EG. So the EG will create a tunnel for the user, and by default, it the tunnel will be up for three hours only. So how to do? The intranet access, just go to configuration, uh, intranet access, and then you can add a tunnel. For example, the app name is NVR. Choose an icon for it, for example, the NVR icon, and app type is HTTP, HTTPS, and what is the IP address, for example, uh, 110.3 on this port. Then click OK. So once you click OK, uh, you can have this uh, click to configure for you to access the device remotely. So there's an expiration of three hours. For example, this one, I created it at night. So it will expire on 22.59. So to demo this one, I will have this. I will actually have a server inside my laptop. I'll just uh, open my server. Okay. So what I'll do is just do this one. So I have here a server, for example, this one, and I have a router, and I will try to access it outside, outside the LAN using uh, internet. Or I have here um Eve NG simulator that can access. I'll just wait for it to go up. So other devices can also be, for example, camera, because uh, we can detect camera using our uh, three three switches and DS and DS. So once the camera is detected, you can also view it outside using this tunnel uh internet access is this taking too long to load just refresh it Um, playing. So this is my, for example, this is my virtual machine here. So what I want is for you guys to access it. 
uh, on your uh, facilities or on your laptops or PC. So to prove that it has uh, internet access. Just wait for it. When will we... Actually, uh, I have this uh, EVNG with some image of uh, EG switch or router. There. So I have this uh, EVNG which has this IP. So I will try to. Uh, yes. yeah. I'll try to access it outside. Just add a tunnel. So my IP address is one zero that four. For example, if HTTPS okay. then enable it to create a tunnel connection. Just click on pen, for example, and I should have maybe it's uh, sorry. Which is to be a And there it is. So you can you can actually access this in your PC if you type uh, this one. I have included on the chat box. So if you access that, you will be able to access my if, uh, lab. So it's a server inside my laptop now. So the EG can create a tunnel well with expiration of three hours. So 1939. So that's three hours. So we have this actually if we have this if it has uh I have created some labs on it using enterprise switch and uh router. So I have a sample. Okay. So later uh Emily I think will send to you guys the images for the VG so you can try on the if there is also a uh, how to documentation how to install it and to basically there's a guide okay yeah so as a summary uh, we have quite a few functions in our cloud that can enable you to secure your local network easily, okay? So we have this access control is securing internet access, anti-app spoofing, loop prevention, and also DHCP snooping. So where is the access control is on this topology? So it's on the EG router. So if you configure ACL, it will be configured on our RAE router, RAE EG router. Also the securing of internet access because the EG router is the one creating the tunnel. Okay. 
then anti arf spoofing, loop prevention, and DHDB snoop snooping is all on the PJ or reuse switch that we have. 